Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the FSL Mobile Legends Bang Bang Tournament and today we are featuring the Philippines edition and you know I'm really excited for all the games uh, they're gonna take part today. We have two really exciting or rather two games of best of trees that we can play today. If you kind of missed out the bracket don't worry we'll be flashing that uh, in between the matches but uh, without further ado before we really go through all the games I think the teams are already in the drafting stage so let's just jump straight into it. So I kind of forgot to give a little bit of a self-introduction there myself. My name is Aries, and uh, if you kind of uh, missed out on the previous uh, games that have already been played, you can always head on down to our Facebook page on you know FSL uh, Mobile. That's for our Facebook, or you can always check it out more through FSL Esports. You can also check out our Instagram if you want to find out more about these uh, tournaments that we hold. Uh, remember, this is a one-off tournament. And you know we have amazing prize pool uh, for these ladies that are playing here today. You know in fourth and third place they'll walk away one thousand diamonds, and then in second place they'll walk away two thousand diamonds, and in first place four thousand diamonds. And you know so I want to give a big shout out to our uh, big sponsors as well as official partners Dream Core Super Solid as. Yahoo TV, so big shout out to them. Uh, but let's go through the draft, shall we? Not first game of the day or the of the night, depending on where you guys are watching from. Uh, we have Signet Angels up against Brand Esports Victors, and you know Signet Angels they decide to ban out both uh, the Bruno as well as the Chow. I think that's pretty decent. Uh, don't really want to go up against these two really sneaky heroes. They're really back into the meta, which is. Kind of testament to how strong they were in the previous meta, and you know now more and more CCs are being more uh, being prioritized. So I, I would just be surprised at them being banned out. And then for Brand Esports Victors, we do see the ban on the Selena and uh, the Claw. I'm really uh, surprised at the first pick through the S murder, but I guess it's fine to a certain degree. Um, you know, it could be a comfort pick. And you know, Esmeralda is still one of the heroes that is very viable. You know, we have seen her perform a lot better. And at this point in time, you know, look at Signal Angels, they don't really have something they can go against the Esmeralda. Uh, yes, they have uh, the Xbox, which is pretty decent in lane, or pretty tanky. And if you're going up against Esmeralda, if they choose to put her uh, in the off lane, I think that's fine. But you know, it's not really a direct counter, nothing that the um, Xbox can really do to the S murder, so I I don't think that's too much of an issue. Uh, meanwhile, we're gonna see a ban on the Uranus as well as the Kimi. Um, I mean, for the side of Brand Esports Victors, they will be definitely looking to pick up an MM for themselves. I think either the carry works well, real. Really. Yep, the carry works well. I was about to um, recommend the Granger, in which this is I think Signal Angels will go for the Granger. Uh, that being said, I think the Granger is going to have a bit of an issue against the Asmarda if they're not able to keep uh, the Asmarda at bay for the Star Signal Angels because you know she's definitely going to be using that uh, Falling Star to try to land onto the Granger on the backline. So I think that's going to be one of the uh, threats that Signal Angels have to be really careful about. And if they're not too careful in terms of positioning, it could pose to be a bit of trouble. So yeah, Vela works really well. I'm kind of surprised that Vela kind of slipped through the cracks. And, oh, okay, so they choose to not go for any MM that's really old school. You know, the duo mage spirit. It's kind of like a season 2, but uh, that being said, I think the heroes wise, it does make it a little bit viable because they have the Valor to kind of stop the ass murder you know it kind of puts the, the carry at range you know not really much that they can reach if you look at the heroes of brand esports at this point in time um they do need to close down the gap you know you're talking about an ass murder you're talking about a tamus you're looking at a carry uh, even for carry right she's kind of close range if you think about it she's, she doesn't really have the range as, comp as compared to the other mms you know they are, and she's not exactly the tankiest to actually take up those um uh, fireball shots coming out from the valor and uh, Brandy spots they choose uh, I wouldn't say take a risk but they do decide to go for the grog uh, as the very last pick I think that's decent as well uh, but yeah I guess in some sense this is the draft they decide to go for so we're gonna be seeing an Xbox Lunox Valor, Kaja, as well as Hylos for Signal Angels, and then over to the side of Brand Esports Victors, we're gonna see a Grok, Kufra, Tamus, Asmoda, and Kerry.
So remember, you are watching the FSL MLBB tournament. This is a one-off tournament. It has uh, no link to the FSL circuit, which is currently on hold due to you know the whole COVID nineteen situation. So we'll definitely try to get as much updates as possible uh, to you guys and if you want to find out more about the circuit and how uh, we're going to carry it out in the later part of the year if uh, the situation kind of permits or already improves in, in a way then you know you got to keep up to date you got to follow us on our social media because that's where we usually post out uh, the latest updates you know to let you guys know uh, what we have in plans as well as our future um, installments and how our committee is going to be run Remember, we're going to be having two best of trees today. The first game is Signal Angels versus Brand Esports Victors, like you are seeing. And then the next game that we have lined up for you guys, I do believe uh, it should be SGP Fem up against Finesse Empress. So, a little bit of uh, aggression coming up from Kiana Rips. I guess in some way, I don't think these two should have too much of a problem against one another uh, at the start of the game. It should be pretty pretty okay, you know, just to have rest a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, bot lane, we do see the Kaja that's going to be playing that off lane role all by uh, himself. It looks like a standard hyper carry build, you know, uh, with the Lunox down in the middle. You do have the Grok uh, with, alongside the, the Kufra, just going to be babysitting the carry no no evade though i think that's kind of surprising because if you look at uh you know victor's lineup they do have a lot of firepower early game you got the you know uh force of nature with the grok you have you know tyrant's rage with the uh, kufra and you also have a very early i, I think carry is you know if, you, if you're going hyper carry on on carry yeah it's, she's kind of an early game to a certain extent you know you do you can get a bit of stacks uh, with the light wheel uh, mark, so I don't think it's too bad of a, a decision to actually go for invade. But you know, they decide to play passive, which I can understand. You know, to carry goes late game, uh, it's not exactly a bad thing for Victorus because you know, if you look at Sigma, they don't really have a late game potential in some sense. Yes, they have a lot of damage in uh, the Valor, but that's pretty much about it. I don't really think that should be too much of an issue for them. So a little bit of farming action coming up from both sides. Uh, pretty passive at this point of time. I don't think we should be seeing too much of an engagement soon. Although it looks like high loss might be running into someone. Uh, it doesn't look like they're going to be taking part in the fight. And you know, 2 minutes to 30 seconds in, you're gonna see a lot of these, you know, boots getting completed. Um, still far away from the first item, but you do see uh, Signal Angels now looking to go on to. Look at those KO shots, and they're gonna use Last Insanity as well. They're really committing to this fight, and they do get the first blood. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they will get a counter kill onto the Kaja, so both teams do get the kill on the off laner. However, we do see that, you know, on the side of. Uh, Victorious, they did manage to pick up the high loss as well, so that's kind of committing two Qs there. They want to start uh, onto the uh, turtle, which I don't think is the best decision. You know, Xbox is really low, doesn't really have his ultimate as well. Uh, it just came up, but she, you know, she's definitely going to have to wait a while before she's in a healthy state. And so, probably a good stop coming out from Brandy Sports Victorious in some sense. They did manage to get the kill, you know, they, they tacked the, the tower a little bit. I'm pretty surprised to see that they didn't really go for the first tier. I mean, they I, they might n have known that uh, Signal East, or uh, Signal, oh sorry, Signal Angels, Signal In Angel, sorry. Uh, they might have wanted to go for a turtle. So good rotation from the bot lane to try to stop that from happening. I think this is where we might see the second gang come in. They really want to take down this Tarmos, and this is going to be vital for them, uh, especially when you're playing a hyper carry. But remember, uh, Signal Angels, they don't really have an MM. Meanwhile, middle lane, we kind of miss a Q there onto the Kaja, and they're going to invade the jungle as well. And 
So another victory for the for the Rick, uh, Vickers. Meanwhile, they do take the bottom lane turret. Top lane Kiana reaps. Trying to break down midnight. And you know, Tamus against Xbox. That's kind of an easy situation for the for the uh, Tamus. Uh, but it's key here that she doesn't really overextend her position. She's doing pretty decent now in lane. And I think she's kind of ahead in terms of farm as well. But you know, Brand Esport Victors, they want to step up the pressure, and they will start off by taking the turtle. I think this is going to be uncontested. No way, uh, the Signux will be able to contest this. But they really do want to come in, and I think that might be a bad situation. Last is they coming in a little bit too late. Tamu's first one to go down, not be able to keep alive with the ultimate. And look at those chaos shots coming out from Wimpsy, not enough to bring down Asmurda and the Magic Ball should be able to slow down the Lunox. They get a near to a complete team wipe and they do get the tier 1 in the middle lane. On top of it, Brand Esports Victorious, they did manage to get the turtle and now they will also get the blue buff in the jungle of Signa Angels. Good engagement there from Brand Esports Victors, you know, kind of power the pressure, and uh, if in, in in a way, if you look at it, you know, you know, uh, seeing that Angels, if they don't have that early game advantage, which they should have because they don't have an MM, they have two majors, and they're really counting on this Valor and Lunox combo to actually provide the burst damage to break down the front line of uh, Brand Esports Victors, but. You know, at this point, they, they're not really having it. You, you can see Tris doing a good job at standing the front line. And her Krufra, you know, the, Muta, she, she's just constantly, you know, being a pain in the neck, doing this kind of subtle damage. But it does add up over time. And now, Brand Esports Victorious, they also get the red buff. Things definitely not looking too good. Kaja trying to run away, but no can do. Tamus going to jump straight into it. With the scythes. And things definitely looking a little bit green for Signal Angels. But Signal Angels definitely do have a way back into this. Like I said, you know, they, they have, you know, Valor and, you know, Lunox is definitely no push over towards the late game as well. So that that is pretty big, like for both of them. So as long as they keep the distance, I think it should be fine. But here we go, Wild Charge coming right in. Asmurda jumping into the Falling Star Moon. They get the first kill onto the Valor. And not even the second skill of the Valor can keep them away. Lunox trying to bring down carry. One more hit should do the trick. They trade both their lives. Uh, but that's a bulk of damage gone for Signal Angels. And it is quite a good engagement. Meanwhile, they're already applying pressure in the jungle. They will once again take away the blue buff. And remember, these buffs are really, really vital to Signal Angels. All the more so when, you know, they have two mages. And I would say to a certain extent, the Valor does need the buff more than Lunox. Because Lunox is definitely not going to, you know, uh, benefit from the cooldown reduction. And now we're gonna see Kaja try to go up against, or rather survive against the Asmarda. Like I said, you know, if you look at the Asmarda, they don't really have, any, on Signal Angel's portion, they don't really have someone that can, you know, kind of stop the Asmarda. And in some way, pick up the carry also reduces, or rather, um, takes away one of the uh, MMs that can kind of deal with Asmarda in, in some sense. So that's actually really smart drafting from uh, Brand Victors in hindsight. Now they put a little bit of pressure down in the bottom lane. Signa Angels trying to push them back. Top lane, Tamus did manage to get the solo kill onto the Xbox. Lord's gonna come up in 10 seconds. Signa Angels already, uh, you know, receiving a lot of pressure down in the top, or rather up in the top lane. Gonna see Lord come up right now. Looks like Carrie's gonna start a bit. Meanwhile, Signal Angels they have a little bit of trouble in top side. 
Passage Creep gonna pick up the tier 2 and we do have Mutant who's gonna clear up the bottom wave as well so Signal Angels have no vision over to the Lord and it's gonna get taken down by Victress uncontested Meanwhile middle lane Carry already making light work off High loss is almost going down and we do see Signal Angels starting to face a little bit of difficulty and oh Tyrus Rage goes in immediately with the revenge as well and that's gonna be a little bit of an issue for them. Midnight on the back line tries to use Last Insanity to do decent damage onto the Grog, but that is not the key target that they wanna go on. Muted forced to use the flicker there. She definitely would like to save it, but better life than with a <laughs> the better life than dead with that with the flicker on cooldown. And now muted can't really do much with the Lord push, although they can try to put a little bit of pressure down to the middle lane. They're trying to keep both creeps alive, or rather both towers alive. And brand new spots victors would definitely be very frustrated with, with that. They did manage to get the tier 2 in the middle lane, but they were definitely hoping for more there. And they might be able to get it. I mean, Cannon Reap's already making, starting work on the tier 3 in the top side. Not enough damage to bring it down, but decent damage. So, they will take what they can get. Victors definitely having a very comfortable lead. That 13k goal lead by the 11th minute mark, and now they can't even force their way into the bottom end. They don't really want to go in, I'm not really committing to a fight here. Meanwhile, top side, Tamu's up against the Xbox. And that's that for now. Three Necklace of Durance, not really, I would say, not really recommended because the effect doesn't really stack, but. You know, at the same time, it is quite efficient uh, for all of them to have in a 1v1. That being said, if you look at the, the calm coming out from Victorious, they're not going to leave the carry alone. They're not going to leave the s alone. Um, so I, I don't really recommend three of them. I think Kaja picking up the Necklace of Durans would be the best. Uh, either that or the Valor because they do have quite a bit of range. And at the same time, they might be able to get something out of it. They do pick up the high loss, and that is a huge kill for them because now, without the front line, brand esports victors can actually force their way in if they want to. They're gonna start off by jumping right onto the back line. They get a three man stun, and that is fantastic coming up from Muted. She doesn't even go down, she still has immortality. And I fear that this might be GG. Xbox comes in with last insanity, and it's really just a desperate attempt to try to stop Brand Esports Victorious. But I don't think they can do much. Carry's gonna start piling onto uh, the the base. They do have uh, a little bit of a hope there. Crip still not coming up. High loss first one to respawn. Glorious pathway being laid down, but it's all too little, too late. And this is it, Brand Esports Victors will walk away with the first game in hand over Signac Angels. And I gotta say this this was a very very straightforward game, you know, and to a certain extent, uh you can't really blame Signac Angels. They were kinda um Falling behind after the mid game, and they shouldn't be right. If you look at the draft that they have, uh, they have a Valor, they have, uh, they also have, uh, you know, this Lunox, and they should be making use of the Valor a lot more, right? The Searing Tor uh, Torrents to keep the Asmada out of range and to keep the Tamus out of range every single time they want to go in. Uh, I, I think, um, on, on the most part, Brand Esports Victors did a really good job of managing the early game. If you look at the farm at this point, I know you've got Carrie who did manage to pick up her max build despite the game only being 12 or rather 13 minutes long. And you know, she was already max built long ago. She was already working towards a potion. So really well played coming up from Brand Esports Victors. And I think Tamos also did a fantastic job at you know keeping the Xbox in check at top side. And for the most part, I think Kaja was the only one that did 
you know, some sort of a work on his lane by picking up the first tier turret. Uh, but, you know, Brand Esports Victorious, they were more than happy to give you a first tier. They were just taking objectives across the map. They got the turtle as well. They invaded the bars really aggressively. And, you know, Signet Angels were just not able to keep up the rotation. But with that being said, uh, congratulations to uh, Brand Esports Victorious. And I think this is a good time to take a little bit of a short break when we are back. Don't go anywhere because we still have uh, the second game to go on. And if, if uh, the game really permits, then we will go to game three. That's if Signal Angels come back in game two. So hopefully they will draft a little bit better. I think uh, the two the two mage uh, draft does work to a certain extent, but they must, and I, I emphasize on the must, they must control brand new sports victories in terms of early game rotation and they obviously should be doing a lot better uh in the opening stages of the game as well so i think we'll go for a short break but when we are back game two between signal uh angels as well as brand victors i'll see you after this all right ladies and gentlemen we are back after that short little break and we are about to jump straight into game two And at this point, we have Brand Esports Victorious currently on the brink of moving into uh, the next, I would say the next, the next bracket in some sense, you know, next stage, you know, they are, remember this is a match of three, so if they do manage to win the next game against Signet Angels, they will make it into the next bracket. Uh, meanwhile, Signet Angels fighting for survival in game two itself. They're going to be swapping sides and we're going to see a ban on the Selena as well as the Claude. Uh, you know, Claude is pretty straightforward. You know, you do get that uh, teleportation and then as well as the uh, Blazing Duet, who's, which is super pesky. Uh, it can kind of run rampant if it's not kept in check in the opening stages of the game. So no surprises to see that uh, he's been banned out. We do see a ban on the Bruno as well as the Chow, which I wouldn't say that I'm too surprised as well to some extent. Uh, yeah, but I mean that being said, we do see uh, the Tamus getting picked up once again. You know, the Calderon Inferno a little bit too much uh, for the x -Buck in the previous lineup. And I gotta say, like, for the most part, uh, it's been pretty one-sided affair, especially in game one. Uh, and I, I think it's something that is going to do with the draft. Like, if you look at the draft in the previous game, um, Brandy Sports Victorious, they definitely were targeting the ban on the Kimi. And I'm not sure to what degree that affected Signal Angel's draft. But they immediately switched into two mid, so that might be something that uh, Signal Angels might be limited to by only deciding to go for the Kimi. But they managed to get her, so I think that's good. Uh, but Brand Esports Victorious now they will pick up the Kaja for themselves, and you know the first pick on the the Tamos is pretty surprising. I would have expected like the first pick to be either the Carry or the Kaja. I think that would have made more sense. But like I said, you know, it could be a comfort pick. It could be something that they don't want to give over to Signal Angels or they don't want to get banned out. We saw in the previous game, Kaja getting picked up by Signal Angels. And, you know, I wasn't the most... Um, I wasn't the most happy about the way they wanted to run the lanes. They, they put the Kaja down to the bot lane. And, you know, that didn't really maximize the impact that Signal Angels could have done with the Kaja. Because, you know, when Kaja hits that level 4, he's going to get the Divine Judgment. Uh, he's going to be able to help the team gank. He's going to be able to help to get uh, the team get kills. And looking at the draft that Signal Angels had previously, which was the 2 mage, they, that's what they should have been doing. Uh, instead, they, they didn't really capitalize on it because they were too... Um, they're falling behind from the opening stages and their draft doesn't really allow them to pull into the late game. You know, you don't have an MM that can carry into the late game. Uh, you know, they don't have a carry, they don't have a Gregor, someone that can put up consistent DPS. So they pretty much do have the Valor in the previous game and that was about it. But that being said, looks like Signal Angels, they pick up the ass model for themselves as well. Kind of feels like a reverse in terms of the draft. They go for the draw hit, uh, which is pretty good. You know, I think the Unstoppable Force will definitely help them in ganking the carry. 
and then you know uh, with the ejector they should be able to catch her out of position but that's only if and if you know brandy sports victors are not babysitting this carry where you know this is where they pick up the kaja and they also pick up the box yeah so there is a tanky tanky lineup to break through it's very obvious they're going for the 151 they pick up the xbox you know they gotta put the tamus in either the top or bottom doesn't really matter i think both heroes will do well in their respective lanes you know both heroes are very tanky if you look at the lineup of brand esports victories they pick up the baxia as well to soak up even more damage alongside the other two you know uh off laners and you know tamus as well as xbox are not exactly the easiest heroes to take down even though they are off laners and fighters per se because they are going to be definitely doing a lot better as compared to you know even i think even if it is up against like um, another fighter like Badang, you know, Badang is quite squishy uh, when you compare all the fighters. Yes, he has the most amount of damage output on burst with the Fist Crack, but, you know, in terms of, like, survivability, um, I think the Xbox and uh, the Tamus will definitely do a better job at fulfilling that role. And we're gonna see the Far Side as the last pick from Signet Angel, so they once again... It looks like they're going for this very mage focused lineup where they have Kimi as, as some sort of an MM but we know Kimi at the end of the day she's gonna run that full mage build. She can go for the Blade of Despair although you know most players have started to shift away uh, from the BOD because it just takes so long to complete um, and you know Kimi going for mage build you go into the glowing wand and you go for the ice cream wand as well and you can go for the genius if they want to. That is something that's really cheap and early game. Uh, you can also kind of abuse the fact that she she's the MF longest range from level one. So yeah, I I think this is where uh Signet Angels will look a lot more comfortable. Something that's within the zone. You know they 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 obviously like to play with that magical damage. They pick up the Asmarder as well. Uh, the only downside to this draft I would say for Signet Angels is that Brandy Sports Victorious. It's very easy to build against lineup, to be honest, right? You you go for uh, uh, magical defense, and you pretty much um, can block out most of the damage output from Signal Angels. And you know you go for immortality, uh, you go for the Athena shoe, and you pretty much have that lockdown in terms of the defensive portion. And the only one that really has physical damage is uh, the jaw hit, as well as the Grok. So remember, this is game two between Brand Esports Victorious and Signet Angels. Signet Angels looking to come back in game two to try to keep themselves in the competition. I'm very surprised to see that it's still a four mass build, so they're definitely still trying to uh, get this hyper carry on the carry. And uh, Grog's just gonna chase that. Red buff away, well done by Aizu, and they have to keep me as well, which is really going to be a pain in the neck for the side of Brandy Sports Victress. An early engagement between these two teams, but Brandy Sports Victress they will walk away with the red buff, so no complaints about that. Meanwhile, we do see the the rest of Signet Angels gonna be backing off. Going back to their farming patterns, Kiana Rip's gonna be in the bot lane, Xbox at the top. And Grog dropping really low, wanted to kind of stop that blue buff take from Brandy's was victorious, but gonna fall there. A little bit of a risky engagement, I would say. Not really needed. Like, they did well to stop the red buff, or rather not stop, but delay the red buff take from Brandy's was victorious. I think... That should have done it. He should have just backed off. But now, Xbox stacking up the flames. But both sides not really wanting to commit to a fight there. Meanwhile, uh, Jawhead gonna be harassing Keanu Reeves. Didn't really manage to steal away the go buff. So I don't think that's gonna be too much of an issue for the Tamus. 
Oh, Tamu is there. Gonna be ejected by the jaw head. Caught out of position as well. Kind of overextended in lane. Should have been a little bit more careful with positioning, but you know, Brand Esports victorious. Although they lose the Tamus, they will walk away with the tier one onto the top side. And in terms of rotations wise, you know, Brand Esports victorious definitely ahead. Head because now they can kind of rotate down to mid, clear out the waves, push out the wave, in fact, and then start uh, to take that turtle. And what they have just done by putting oh, the burst as well. I, I'm pretty sure they used the divine judgment. Yeah, it's in cooldown, a good catch up onto uh, Lady Rainicon. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they're playing a lot more aggressive as well. The wild charge coming in, but not in time to save the jawhead. And Tree is caught in a bad position. Meanwhile, Muted rotating around as well just to keep the Baxia alive. Shouldn't be an issue. And in fact, Brandy is supposed to victory as well. They managed to get the uh, a kill down the bot lane. They are already starting onto the turtle as murder a little bit late. Nothing that Wimsy could have done there. I think Brandy is supposed to victory. They just have a very good understanding of how their lineup is going to succeed, especially in the opening stages, right? You look at the way that Sick Mag Angel should be playing. They should be playing a lot more aggressive uh, by utilizing the Kimi, but they haven't been able to break down this rotation that Bernie Sports Victors are putting forward. Uh, you know, you, you do see a lot of aggression from their lineup. They're, they're trying uh, to go to the top. They're taking the tier ones. They're, they're taking turtle. Uh, you know, even though they lose a kill down the bot lane, they're, they're achieving something else you know uh, somewhere else on the map and now brand esports victors they're gonna run into four men uh, of Signac angels and Baxia is gonna be jumping on someone right now wants to go the kimi but a little bit too deep and they will settle for the grok right there but the oh the feather airstrike not enough damage to even bring down the Baxia they also take out the kimi and and his boss Victor is just putting so much pressure on this bottom lane. Meanwhile, Whipsy not being able to push in as Garza is gonna hold them at the tier one. I don't think there's anything that Signal Actress or rather Signal Angels can do about their bottom lane. Brand is supposed to uh, They don't really see a threat coming up from the bottom side. They're just gonna settle for this. Uh, tier 2 and Azu, I gotta say, caught in a bad position. Divine Judgment not even needed. One more hit for the carry should do the trick. And they get the kill onto the Grok. Meanwhile, top side. Xbox brought really low, but she's definitely doing her job. Guys are just holding Whimsy at the tier 1. In fact, uh, this Asmorda hasn't been able to crack the turret. A brand new sports victorious. Slowly clawing away at the net worth. Look at that. 6k goal hit within 5 minutes. Better X strike. Pull out a little bit too early, in my opinion. But they get the divine judgment. They try to force a Q onto Aizu, who did a good job at using wall charge at the very last moment. Our brand Esports Victorious already moving on to the next objective, which is gonna be the turtle. Signal Actress, uh, Signal Angels, I don't know why I keep saying Actress. Oh, for the airstrike coming out from Lady Renicon, but stopped just prematurely. Last insanity coming out from Garside, not being able to pick off anyone there, but Trace already on the hunt for the Asmoda. Should be able to land the skill, they get the kill, and they also walk away with the turtle previously, which is pretty good. But Signal Actress, definitely looking to try to bounce back from this one. They find themselves in a very familiar spot. This feels like deja vu from game one where. You know, you're just getting torn apart by this rotation coming from Brand Esports. Angels not able to hold off Brand Esports as they knock down this tier 1 in the middle lane. Looking at itemizations for now, you do see the carry already starting to work towards the Demon Hunter sword. 
comparison, Kimi is not even close to that BOD that I talked about. I was surprised to see them go for this physical damage, Kimi, because I, I really wanted them to build into the magic damage. This way, you know, Kimi does scale a lot better uh, with magical build. You do get, uh, you know, to get your tier 1 or your tier 3 items a lot quicker because, you know, magical items are just so much cheaper. You know, glowing ones so much more in inexpensive compared to the uh, BOD. But now the top lane, they're gonna burn the Divine Judgment, but no issues there in picking down the ass murder. Really easy. You know, carries damage is just too much to deal with at this point of time. And I think a couple more hundred go and they should be able to get that, um, Blade, uh, or not Blade of Despair, but that Demon Hunter Sword. And no, she decides to go for the Golden Star first, which is fine, you know, it's it's still a pr it's still an absolute fantastic build. Endless Battle on both of uh, the carry as well as the Tamus. I think she's definitely going to build into the Lightning Belt pretty soon, but for now, top lane. A little bit of uh, action in the top jungle. Guys, I dropping really low. Didn't manage to use Last Insanity in time. But Falling Stammer being used by Wimsy. They tried to get the gang onto the carry, but really well babysitted by the Baxia. They have no open. Or rather, no opening at all to go onto Brandy Sports Victorious. I think that. Signal like Angels still have a way into this. Uh, because they do have the S murder, but you know, if you look at the drop this time around, S murder doesn't play as well uh, as in the first game where you know she's def she's going up against a tough opponent and the carry this time. And now we do see the Feather Airstrike coming up from Lady Rainicorn tries to follow up with the Wild Charge from the Grog, but doesn't really able to do much. In fact, they really find two members going down. Look at the carry, the DBS being pulled out uh, by, by Colin. And she's pretty unstoppable at this point. I have fleeting time coming coming up for muted, which is, which is gonna help them in getting that divine judgment and cooldown as quickly as possible. Feather Ashra, I'm gonna keep them at bay for a little bit, just to clear out the waves before they touch the tier trees. But at this point, brand new sports victorious. They know what they're waiting for, and it's gonna be the Lord that's coming up in about 30 seconds. That's their next go to. They don't even need divine judgment at this point. Uh, look at that. Midnight nearly went down there. Now, Brand Esports Victorious. Want to wrap this game up? I think they might be able to. If they get one more pick off over here before the lot comes up, I, I think it might be GG because. You know, you're gonna lead into that two, two waves of super minions. You know, lots gonna push down to top side. Lightning belt completed for Colin. And this is where the carry becomes really scary. Not like she's not like she's not scary at this point in time. She's, she's pretty much uh, pretty unstoppable, I would say, on the side of Brandy Sports Victorious. Nothing uh, on the end of uh, Signal Angels that can really touch her. I mean, if you look at the potential that they have. Oh, Divine Judgment as well, just to keep Midnight from running. It's got no way out, and without the Jawhead, I was about to say, Jawhead is really the only one that can kind of catch Colin out with the Unstoppable Force, and then you try to eject uh, the carry onto the back line. Hopefully, they can burst her down. This is pretty much the only way which I see that they can win a team fight. Because if you look at the Hyper, uh, hyper Carry lineup, Generally, you know, the MM will carry most of the farm, she's gonna have the most damage, and if you do take on an MM, it does make it a lot easier to break in team fights. But at this point, oh, Brandy Sports Victor is just catching anyone who's stepping outside the base, and I think Aizu is gonna go down to Colin again. Asmorada is the, pretty much the only person that can jump now. That they do have midnight coming up. They are in a 4v5. The Lord's gonna palm it down on the top side. Tree is gonna jump onto the back line first. He might go, she might go down, but they don't care. They're just hammering away. Look at how quickly the Wimps is going down. And I'm fear that this is GG. The Lord is still at half HP. But the base already cracked the right wide open. And Brand Esports Victorious. They get their 2-0 in less than an hour. And this is pretty much it for Signal Angels. Unfortunately, they were just not enough 
for brand new sports victories. So look at game two, you know, it's a lot, I would say it's a lot quicker, right? It's around the same time, both below 13 minutes. But in game two, I don't know. I feel like if they, they did manage to complete the POD on the Kimi, which I think is, you know, give props to Signal Angels. They were struggling for farm already. And to be able to get this amount of farm on their lineup, I think it's pretty good. But, you know, it just wasn't enough. They still need so much to build against the carry. And even if they do take on the carry, you know, Tamu's at this point in time, he's got Queen, she's got Queen's Wing, Queen's Wings, sorry about that. And she's really got the Endless Battle done. And she's probably going to build into, I would say, Brute Force armor looks pretty good on the Tamu's. Just to go and, and catch up, uh, catch up, you know, onto the Kiwi. You can catch up onto the um, far side if she wants to. But, you know, you, you need like a, you need so much more against this uh, Tamus, right? You you still need like a necklace of durance against his uh, against uh, uh, Tamus healing, uh, current inferno. You need like so much more armor piercing to to, to even break down this Baxel. We haven't really talked to Baxel as well. And in fact, the entirety of the game, the only kill that they got was on the Tamus in the bot lane, while you know Brandy Sports Victors were getting not only the top tier tower, but uh, the tier one tower in the top lane. But also the turtle. So I think on both situations, um, Signal Angels had a lot of difficulty trying to break down this lineup coming up from uh, Brandy's Boss Victors. And for the most part, Brandy's Boss Victors they were really aware of their uh, of their winning conditions. You know how they were able to break uh, Signal Angels down and. You know, at the end of the day, they knew what they had to do was just try to keep the carry alive for the early part. And, you know, she would definitely carry to the late game. And, you know, they picked up two very hardy um, fighters in the, for the side lanes, which is both uh, the towns as well as the uh, as well as well the Xbox. And like I said, you know, in game one, I think Signal Angels would have done a lot better if they had put the Kaja as a roaming support as compared to an off lane because you know Kaja doesn't really do much damage to the towers you know she's not really efficient in a 1v1 you know as compared to like an Xbox or even a Tamus and you, at the end of the day you want him to be roaming because um, Divine Judgment really helps you in the gank you pretty much have a, a skill that can immobilize someone even in 5v5 fight you take someone out it's instantly a 4v5 and you know I think this is really good uh, situation already a good example of how to use supports really well because you know I think Kaja is just really uh, as much as he is a really meta hero I think I still think there's a lot of teams that do overlook Kaja because of how you know uh, teams are so used to not having a support in teams but when you go into the hyper carry meta which is, has been a meta for the past two seasons you gotta adapt and you gotta pick up this valuable ones you do, this is the reason why you see Vela getting banned out and you see heroes like Selena getting banned out you know heroes like Diggy getting banned out which you know Brand Esports Victress also took out in the draft so yeah that being said congratulations to Brand Esports Victress and you know com uh, commemorations to uh, Signet Angels they did their best but this is the end of the journey for them uh, well, for Brand Esports Victors, we will see them in the next bracket. So hopefully they can continue this rampage that they are on. And we'll go for a break, but don't go anywhere because we still have one more uh, game to to be on stream, which is, I believe, going to be... Uh, I'm looking for the game. And, you know, we're going to flash the bracket up uh, pretty much after this. And, yep, it's going to be SGP Fam up against uh Denise Denise Empress so I want to see how these two teams play I've never heard these two teams hopefully they can put on a good show for me as well as the viewers at home and hope you've uh, enjoyed the first game so far we'll go for a break but when we are back more mobile legends bang bang games <laughs> 